this thing that is driving you mad. We shouldn't have done it, so I've told them. What? You've told someone? Who? The police are sending someone round. when you went up to revise. Oh, and what did you tell them? Well, you've got to tell me what you told them. A hundred percent. Oh, yeah, just the people who wanted to see. Boss? Yeah, any chance to pull over to the club after and a cup of coffee? What for? Well, uh, I want to pick your brains. All right, what about? Well, you find out if you turn up, won't you? Call it a bit of market research. Time is money. Too right. Yeah, well, if you turn up, maybe we'll talk about money, all right? So we'll see you there in a bit. Uh, does that include me? Eh, uh, yeah, if you want. See you, lot. I told him his rave night to a crowd. Uh, and I don't know what he's after. Yeah? Yeah, something for nothing. His kind generally are. No, no, I haven't seen him. According to the message I got from Control, you said you'd seen him. Mum was a bit upset. She hasn't seen him. But I did make a threatening phone call to her this morning. Just a call. He's definitely not been back to this house. If he does, you must phone us straight away, Mrs. Jordash. Do you understand that? I don't want to alarm you, but if he's already served one prison sentence for assaulting you, he could always do it again. He hit her again when you were called out the other week. That's when Mum told him to leave us alone for good. So, this phone call. Did he say where he was ringing from? No clue whatsoever? I don't think so. What did he say exactly? He... Oh, it was awful for her. Did she really have to repeat it? Well, it would be helpful. We can't really say if it was threatening unless we know what he said. It's all right, Mum. I'll tell him. He was using all sorts of filthy language, and then he threatened her. He said that if she told the police, he'd attack her again and he'd kill her. Can you see why she's so upset? Well, I know, love. Look, I realise that. She was really frightened. And it was all right for us to call you out, wasn't it? Oh, no problem there. When you did say if there was any problem, we had to call you. You did the right thing, Mrs. Jordash. If it calls again, you ring us immediately. You could have worked with telecom. They might put an intercept on if you're getting dodgy calls. Right. I'll be off then. Bye, Mrs. Jordash. Ring if you hear from him again. Could I leave that pond line there a few days longer? I have advertised it, but I've got no space for it at my place. I know, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, listen, man, I know it's probably none of my business, but I've just seen a police car go and uh, you're OK. Has your dad been back? No. There's nothing. It's just that, uh, Well, you know, if he comes back next time, uh, I wouldn't just walk away. There won't be a next time. Trevor's... Trevor won't be back. I know he won't. There's no need to worry. But thanks. Right, would you like to step this way, take a seat? You can tell me everything you know about rave lights. I mean the good kind, not the crap variety, Mike. I told you. I don't know anything about rave lights. Oh, I'll tell you what, then. Uh, there's some coffee on the wall over there. Why don't you make us all a cup? OK. Right, lads. So where did it go wrong? Come on, you've got your name for the kick-off. Nave on it, Ruth. It's dead enough. Then put an ad in the paper. You pass it off designing and printing some flyers. But what about the music and that? Well, he's the fella to speak to there. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, you've been to loads more than me. Tell me about that DJ. Oh, yeah. You'd get more credit if you had a DJ that was known for raves. One of my mates at college is well into me. She's done some big ones. She? You mean she's a girl? Oh, she's good, though. Lindy La. Lindy La. Yeah, well, look, I'm thinking about doing it next Wednesday night, so uh, if... Just hang on, man. I'll just get the phone. 
think I'm not gonna win any of Stop pulling me up, will ya? I haven't been to loads of raves. Well, neither have I. But if there's a chance of him slipping us a few, Bob, you better do some Yeah, well, okay. Thanks very much. Uh, make sure you get yourself one. Right, so Wednesday night. What do we need and where are we gonna get it? I was just thinking, we need some good visuals as well. You know, projection screens and all that kind of stuff. And where can we get that from? Oh, we might be able to help you there. Hello. What's this? This is a private meeting. You know what you have with your friend, Brian Kennedy. Are you in on this? Oh, um, no, not really. I, I'm just waiting for these two. Is there any chance of one of those for me? Yes. Thanks. I really can't see why this couldn't be done on the phone. It's my children I'm fighting for. I do things face to face, not hiding behind phones and solicitors. I want you there for more support. But why does it have to be so heavy? It's Max who's a heavy one, not me. I know. But I got the plane tickets this morning, the trip's all arranged. I just can't stand the thought of any screw ups. Oh, don't be so wet. I can handle that. It's going to be like this, frightened to death every time the doorbell rings. No. It can only get easier and easier. For heaven's sakes, Mum, you've already handled two visits from the police. What could be worse? Anyone would have done the same in our position. It was the right thing to do. It was him or us. And now we've got our lives back. It can only get easier. I promise you, Mum. When did you apply for a bar job here? Oh, about three months ago. Your doorman didn't like me. Oh, yeah. The famous Jimmy Corkill interviews. I wish I'd been there. I'd have taken you on. Is there nothing available now? I'm sorry. What are you doing now? Oh, not very much. Well, actually, I've been doing some life modelling at an art school. Really? It doesn't bother you stripping off in front of a room full of people? No, at least it turns me some money, however little. I know how you could make more. More than three pounds an hour, cash in hand. More than twice that much. And all you'd have to do is be nice to a guy and go out for dinner with him. Oh, no. No, no, I, I couldn't possibly do that. What's wrong? Well, it sounds like, you know, prostitution. No, it's not that. Nothing like it. All you have to do is spend an evening with a bloke and make him look good and feel good. Look. I've been running an escort service from my other club for two years now. I've got a few girls lined up to work from here to help fill the place. I pay seven pounds an hour. Every fella that contacts me is fetid. I've got no time for weirdos. These men, are they married? <laughs> I suppose most of them are, yeah. Mind you, I've got a few on my books that are, you know, regulars, that are single blokes. They just want a nice, nice out with a girl and no hassle. But I can't see what it is in it for you. I do get an introduction fee, but mostly I do it for business in the club. All my girls have to meet the fella in here and bring him back to the club later on. If they want to go elsewhere afterwards, that's their business. And men will pay so much just to go out with a girl, you know, without anything else? Mostly, it's just men that are away from home, they're bored or they're lonely. They can fit all the money back on their expenses. It sounds so easy. It is. Yes, but I, I live round here. I, what if somebody was to find out what I was doing? Who's to say you didn't just meet the fella in the club? You're a good-looking girl. You must get men asking you out. Oh, um, sometimes. Why don't you try it just once? If you don't like it, well, it's all legal and above board. Think it over and give me a ring. Right, lads, so uh, as soon as you get the lights and the DJ and the visuals sorted out, you can give us a ring then, can't you? Right, great. Yeah, you haven't got that with the money, have you? Look. Oh.